And I'm going to share my screen with you guys. I am Misty. I'm the Writing Center Coordinator. If you call in or email us, I am who you speak with. Um, I have a degree in English and I am pretty new to, to Full Sail. I've only been here for a couple of months, so I'm really excited to be here and talking to you guys about the Writing Center. A uh, couple of things to know. We have an APA workshop that we'll be doing next week um, on Friday as well. That's going to go into much more in-depth APA style and formatting. It's a really good thing to come to if you aren't 100% comfortable using APA yet. Um, if you have questions, I will be more than happy to answer them, but we will do that at the end. It just makes it a little bit easier for me um, as I go through. So with that being said, going to get started. All right. So the Writing Center is available to all Full Sail students. We are also available to um, alumni. And you can learn about the services we offer and find our online writing resources on our page at Connect. I'll show that to you guys in just a minute. In this video, we're going to explain how the Writing Center can assist you and we'll let you know how you can make an appointment. In addition, we're gonna go over some of the resources that are available on our welcome page, and we're also going to talk a little bit about editing and writing papers in general. So the Writing Center helps with grammar, academic writing, APA style, creative writing, scripts, resumes, and cover letters, as well as ESL work. We are not a proofreading service. So we will go through your paper with you and we will point out um, mistakes that you have made, but you can't just send us a paper and expect us to um, fix all of your issues within it. You, you have to make an appointment and actually work with us. The idea is that we help you, we help deepen your education. We don't do the work for you. The Writing Center is open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Friday. Unfortunately, we don't have any weekend hours right now. Um, and we have online appointments, on-campus appointments, and open hours. On-campus appointments are offered in Building 4D and you have to have an appointment. We also have online appointments, which this is our favorite. This is how most students tend to use the Writing Center, is with our online appointments. This allows us to offer convenient appointments for students who live further away and take classes online, as well as for students who are local students but have extremely busy schedules. Our online appointments happen through GoToMeeting, the same program that we're using right now, but they are one-on-one. -on -one. We also offer library open hours. For local students, the open hours are conducted in the Full Sail Library and they change month to month based on student availability or tutor availability, I should say. For the month of February, our open hours are Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. All right, so scheduling. How do you actually get the appointment that you need? There are a couple of different ways that you can do it. You can schedule an appointment by phone. You can call 407-679-0100, which is Full Sail's um, number, and the extension to the Writing Center is 2340. You can email us at writingcenter at fullsale.com, or you can fill out our appointment request on Connect, and I'll show you really, really quickly what our Connect page actually looks like. Okay, if you've never gone to the Writing Center on Connect, this is what it looks like. Um, there are a lot of different things. This is the Writing Center appointment request form. If I click on it, it's going to take me to the requests that we've actually received in. Um, this is the form. So it explains what we need to know. Um, 
and then you begin the form. You, we need to know your name, your full sale email address, your preferred appointment time, and then what help, what you need help with. Um, and then you can give us all of these times that we're available. So that's on our connect page. Ah, here we go. You can also find this if you scroll down. You can click this link here, and we also have it linked here. So we really want to have just as many ways for you guys to find us as possible. As far as making an appointment goes, um, we are in the library and we're around on campus, so we're not always near the phone. So if you call, please leave a message with um, your name and a phone number that we can reach you at, your email address, what kind of appointment you need, and when you'd like to have your appointment. But if you need, if you need to get back to us really quickly, um, the best way to do it is to just send us an email or fill out the appointment request. Appointments must be made 24 hours in advance. Please let us know whether you prefer an online or an on-campus appointment. Also suggest a few days and times that you're available. Um, we also really recommend don't wait until the last minute to make your appointment. The Writing Center does fill up pretty quickly. So if you know that you're going to need an appointment before your assignment is due on Wednesday, don't wait until Tuesday to make that appointment. All right, I want to go through a, right now and just look at some of the things that we have on the Full Sail Welcome, or excuse me, our Connect page, the Writing Center's Connect page. Um, you can find our blog that we update with things like when we're going to be doing this workshop, when we do the APA workshop under news. Um, this is the actual blog itself. We have a really great one here about the five paragraph essay. Um, coming back to the home, you can also find the blog right here. And this allows you to search based on the issue that you're looking for. We have a writing center frequently asked questions. If you're having, um, if you're needing to figure something out, out, whether we offer the service that you need or not, you can look here. We have a bunch of online resources, such as our Facebook group, our Pinterest page, um, helpful APA links, grammar links, academic writing links, proofreading links, creative writing links, um, ESL links, resume and cover letter links. Just, I mean, it goes on and on. These are all really great resources for you to use as well. Um, we have videos where we put up our archived workshops that we do, as well as some other really great ones that people have made. And we have things that you can download that are often like PDFs that can help you with the APA help and all of those other writing questions that might come up. Um, and so again, if you are ever looking for the answer to a question, this is the connect page is a good place to come. You can just search for writing center in your search bar and it will take you right there. All right. Now we're going to go into a little bit of proofreading tips. And these are things that when you come to the Writing Center, they might be suggested to you, but I wanna give you a little overview about how to proofread on your own. This one, people are always surprised when I say it to them, but a great thing to do if you've been writing for a while or you've been looking over your work, you've been trying to make it better, a great thing to do is to take a break. If you've been working for three hours straight, your brain is going to be on meltdown mode. So take a break. It doesn't have to be a long break. It can be just get up, walk around your house, get a glass of water, make yourself a cup of tea. You can take, you know, a walk, get your get your blood moving, and when you come back, you will be so much fresher, you will be so much more ready to actually focus on your writing again that 
it will help tremendously. The, the 10 or 15 minutes that you set aside to take that break, you'll make it up with how much more focused you are when you get, when you get back. And I like to take, I like to use this through all of the processes that you do when you're writing. Okay, after you've gotten your draft and it's written, it's done, but you know that there, there are some mistakes you want to go through and edit it, print it out. There's something about holding the hard copy in your hands that becomes really, really helpful for finding your mistakes. Um, it makes it easier to read it aloud. It changes the way that you're, you're focused on it. If you've been typing it at your computer, Printing it out is just a way to tell your mind, we're changing gears here. It also allows you to make notes. Um, you can give it to other people. Printing it out, printing out your assignment can be very, very helpful in those ways. Similarly, you can read it out loud. A lot of what you're trying to do when you're editing is trying to get out of the writing mindset and into the editor's mindset. So how do you switch from just getting all your ideas onto the paper to going through and making sure that those ideas make sense and that you've said it the best way you can? Reading aloud is one really great tip for that. One of the reasons is, is that when you read out loud, you force your brain to slow down. When you read on your computer and you read quickly and in your own mind, your brain is a great processing tool and it will fix mistakes without you even realizing it has done it. So when you read aloud, it forces you to slow down and it helps you just catch those mistakes a little bit better. You can also read out loud and you will hear places where you stumble or where you have a hard time reading it smoothly, and that can sometimes illustrate that your writing is not as strong there as you need it to be, or that your idea is not fully flushed out. Another great thing that you can do is you can have someone else read your paper out loud, and you can mark any areas where they stumble or where they have a hard time figuring out what you mean. And this is a tool that when you come into the writing center, we use quite a lot. You might have a tutor who wants to read your work out loud to you and have you tell them the places where you think there might be mistakes, or they might ask you to read your work out loud to them. Some people get embarrassed about this, and it's not something that we're doing to make you feel embarrassed. It's something that through a lot of study, um, teachers and tutors have found to be an extremely useful tool. So don't be embarrassed if somebody ever asks you to read something out loud. Oh, and this is a new thing that I had never even thought of, but a student came in to have a writing center appointment with me and they were telling me that they have a program that will actually read their work out loud to them. And they find that very helpful because if the computer messes up, it's obviously for, for a reason. So if you have that kind of resource, you can use that as well. Okay, read it backwards. This one is a little bit tricky and it's a little bit, well, it's not tricky, it's just time consuming. The idea behind this is that you would take your draft and instead of reading it from the beginning to the end, you read it from the end to the beginning. And you can do this sentence by sentence. So you read the very last sentence of your draft and then you read the second to last sentence and the third to last sentence and so on and so forth until you've read the whole thing. Again, this makes you slow down. It makes you, it, it keeps your brain from getting in the flow of your ideas, which allows you to see your mistakes more readily. If you don't think you have time to read the entire thing backwards, um, because it can it can get tricky to make sure you're hitting each sentence. You can read it backwards by paragraph. So you could start with your conclusion and read your conclusion paragraph and then your last point and so on and so forth. But the idea is to just find ways that really make you look at your writing in a new way. And that's going to help you find those mistakes. And that's going to help you find... Um, the awkward phrasings and the, you know, misspelled words and things like that easier. 
This one is also kind of time consuming. Editing is extremely time consuming, but this might be your best tool to use, which is to check for specific errors. Now, this can take a little bit of time because you also have to figure out what kind of specific errors you have. Um, for instance, I know that I use a lot of run on sentences when I write my first drafts. So when I finish a draft, I sit down and I read the whole thing and I look for run on sentences. So if you have a lot of instructors who give you feedback and their feedback tends to be things like um, your subject verb agreement is incorrect, you might want to look up what subject verb agreement is and then make a little note that every time you turn something in, you're going to read it for subject verb agreement. Um, and you could have a whole list of them of things that you know you struggle with or things that you know are common errors or things that you know are, you know, pet peeves of the person who's going to be reading your writing. And so you just you read it through once looking for, let's say, comma mistakes or um, comma misuse. So you might read through it and you might circle every time you see a comma in your writing. And then you would go and you would check each of those commas to make sure you've used them appropriately. And then you might read through looking for passive voice. And you'd circle every time you see passive voice in your writing. And then you'd go through and you could fix them. This takes a little bit of time. But if you check your papers for specific errors, one, you're going to read your paper a lot. And so you're going to really be able to, to focus and get into it. But also, you really will help teach yourself the mistakes that you're making and the ways to fix those mistakes in a way that can be very useful further on and throughout your academic career. Okay, we're going to switch topics just a little bit, and we're going to talk about some paper writing tips. This is the whole process from beginning to end some tips that we have on that. You need to make a plan. Now, a lot of people do not like to do this. A lot of people are spontaneous and they like to just kind of fly by the seat of their pants. But making a plan, especially if you're nervous about writing, is going to be extremely helpful as you go through the process. So there are five main steps in the writing process, and it's pre-writing, drafting, revising, editing, and publishing. And yes, there is a difference between revising and editing, which we will discuss when we get there. Um, so let's talk about pre-writing and some of the tools and tricks that you need to do when you pre-write. The first thing you need to do when you write anything is you need to understand your assignment, whether it's an assignment that is given in class or it's an assignment that you get at your job, you need to make sure that you're actually completing what your instructor is telling you to complete. So I always recommend that students read the whole assignment from beginning to end once. And just mark down any place that you're not entirely sure what your instructor is asking for. And then read it through again, paying special attention to those places that you have marked. If after the second read through, you are still confused, you should email your instructor immediately. Your instructors want to hear from you. They would much rather hear from you early on before you've done a lot of work or before you've turned your assignment in. Um, they'd much rather hear from you in the beginning so that they can help you then and make sure that you're not spending a lot of time on something that isn't important or isn't necessary for the class. So just make sure you understand your assignment. Then you wanna brainstorm. Now, brainstorming looks different for different people, but I will say probably the most important part of brainstorming is make sure that you have a copy of, some, of your work. So some people really like to brainstorm on paper or on their computer, and other people like to talk their ideas out. None of these are bad things to do, but if you're going to talk your ideas out, try recording yourself so that at the end of your brainstorming session, you actually have a log of all of the great ideas that you came up with. You can brainstorm by writing down all of the most important ideas that pop into your head. You can outline um, 
what you think your paper should look like. You can do word bubbles or word associations. I don't know if you guys have ever done those, um, but that would be like you write your main idea in the middle of a paper and then you circle it and then you draw out from that main idea all of the other ideas or details about it that pop into your mind. And then you do the same thing for those um, sub bubbles. And eventually you will have this web that goes really far out and hopefully really deep into your subject. And you'll end up with a lot of questions that you want to answer or a lot of ideas that you want to explore. Um, and that allows you to really feel comfortable that you will have something to write about. After you brainstorm, you get to research. Now, researching just is just gathering information. Depending on the assignment that you will do, that you are doing, depends on what kind of research you will need. So your research might be watching YouTube videos. It might be reading newspaper articles. It might be um, finding two differing opinions about the same topic. But one one place that you should definitely know, I'm going to show it to you guys right, right now, is you should definitely get familiar with the library page. This is the library page on Connect. It's the same thing. You can search for it here just by typing in library. Um, but down here you have a frequently asked questions. You should probably look that up. They give you great information. Um, but what you want to know about is the library catalog where you can search for books, you can search for movies, you can see what the library actually has, and the research databases. When your, prof when your instructor says that you have to do research on an assignment, this is a really great place to start. Your research databases um, are just listed here, you know, academic search complete, AP image collections. There are all kinds of great things on here. You can click here to see even more. You have to log in. So become familiar with the databases that Full Sail provides for you. Um, for instance, Academic Search has comprehensive, scholarly, multidisciplinary, full text database. Um, there are periodicals, re um, peer-reviewed journals. Sometimes your instructors will require that your um, your research be from peer-reviewed articles. So you want to make sure that you're actually finding journals that use that that system. Um, but this is a really really great resource, and the people at the library are wonderful, and they want to help you use it as well. So don't feel bad if you need to contact someone and get a little more help on that. Okay, so after you research, we're still in the pre-writing stages. You outline. Now, this slide is a visual outline, and it is extremely busy. But if you are a visual learner, it's a good thing to remember that your outlines don't have to be the way you learned about them in middle school with, you know, Roman numeral one and then your main point. I mean, you can use that kind of traditional outline if that's the way um, it works best for you. But the idea with outlining is that you just create a roadmap for yourself. For instance, I really like to outline with note, um, note cards because you can put your ideas on a note card, you can put quotes that are gonna be important in your paper, and then you can rearrange them every time you look at them to figure out the best order and the best way to organize your, your paper. And that's really what your outline is for. It's for you to make sure that you've answered the questions and found the research that you need so that you can really begin um, filling out this idea of whatever you're writing about. Some people are really intimidated by outlines, so I just, I really do want to stress that this is something that is good for you to do to make sure you're not missing anything, any information that you need for whatever you are writing. Um, so often no one will even see your outline. Often it will just be for you. So don't be intimidated by that um, section of it. Okay, so once you've outlined, you've researched, you've brainstormed, now you have to draft. 
And for a lot of people, this stage is the hardest. They open up, you know, a word processing document and they see that little cursor blinking on the white page and they just get really intimidated. And what I would strongly suggest is that you do something called free writing for about five to 10 minutes. And that means either on your computer or with pen and paper, you just write for 10 minutes or five minutes or two minutes. Pick a time and say, I'm going to write without stopping about my idea. It doesn't matter if it is great writing or not. This is literally to just get you over that first hurdle of putting your ideas down on paper. You will go back and you will edit and you will revise and you will proofread your whole paper multiple times. So your draft doesn't have to be perfect, but you do need to start at some point. And if you struggle with that beginning drafting stage, I really do suggest there are all kinds of interesting like apps that you can do so that, you know, if you write for a hundred words on this app, like a picture of a kitty pops up, just little things to to make you actually focus on writing and getting your ideas down. Um, I know a lot of people, I do this, I will write and then I'll erase everything and then I'll write and I'll erase everything and three hours will have passed and I don't have anything to show for my hard work. So sometimes it's not about making sure it's perfect, it's about making sure that something exists on the paper. And then after you've drafted, Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. But after you've drafted, you're going to do things like revise and edit. When you're drafting, this is the time that you want to consider your audience. A lot of students will come into the writing center and they will say, my instructor said that my tone was wrong or that I didn't consider my audience when I wrote my paper. And I will ask them, who is your audience for this assignment? And they don't know. They think it's their professor or the other students in their class. And that is not the case. We want you to think about if you're writing a paper about a problem in your industry or um, someone, something that you might have to overcome in your industry, the your audience is probably other people in your industry. It's your peers. Um, if you are writing a general information piece that is supposed to explain your job to someone who might not understand what you do, your audience is the general population. If you are making a marketing program that sells sport a sports energy drink, you know, your audience is probably people who want to drink that. So you have to think about who your audience is so that you can tailor your tone to your audience. I like to think of it like this. If I were writing a text message to my best friend or to my boss, they would sound very different. If I were writing a letter to my grandmother or writing a birthday card to my sister, they would sound very different. So just think about that. Is Should your, depending on who your audience is, will depend on how formal your writing is, Um, how professional you want to sound in it, and things of that nature. Oh, writing concisely. This is a very important one. You want to focus your writing. You want to get rid of extraneous ideas, and you want to get rid of things that just clog it up. So think about getting rid of things like adverbs. Adverbs are words that end in L-Y. You usually don't need them. Sometimes you do, but usually don't. You want to think about anywhere where you have said the same thing twice. So don't be redundant. Um, And anything that doesn't relate back to your main point of your paper, you probably want to get rid of. Okay, our next step in writing is revision. Now, revision is when you look at the global issues in your paper. You want to look at things like, do you have a thesis? Did you complete all of the requirements of the assignment? Does your paper make sense? Meaning, does it move from one idea to the next in a way that is easy and logical to follow? 
Do you have transitions? Do you need to cite anything? Do you have enough research to back up your claims? These are the large global issues that you need to look at to make sure that your paper is as good as you can make it. And this happens in your revision stage. So you would go through and you might mark your paper and you might say, I need something here or I need to move this paragraph. Um, I need to expand my conclusion or I need to rewrite my thesis because it doesn't quite um, make sense anymore. So then you'd make all of those changes. You'd read through again, make sure that you're happy with it. And then you would move on to editing. And editing is where you go through line by line, um, you know, section by section, and you look for things like grammatical errors. You look for things like um, subject and verb agreement and verb shifts and um, e spelling, all of those things that we talked about in the proofreading tips. This is where you would usually use those in your editing stage. Now, this is the fun part. This is the publishing. Your paper is written. You've pre-written. You've drafted. You've revised. You've edited. You've done everything you can to make sure your paper is as perfect as it can be. And this is when you get to turn it in. Or you get to, you know, send that short story off to try to get it published. This is when all of your hard work comes through, is in the publishing stage. All right. And finally, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about APA resources. We have a couple of them that I think are really, really good. I'm not going to go too deeply into APA because we will, uh, we do offer um, a seminar online for that. Um, if you go to the Connect events on the Writing Center's page, I will be posting that soon. But this is the Purdue OWL, and it is a great resource for you to use. Um, it goes through and it it explains in-text citations, you've got footnotes, endnotes, all of these great things, how you can, um, you know, cite tables and figures. APA is the, um, is the formatting that you will use throughout Full Sail. Um, it stands for the American Psychological Association, and it's used to cite sources within the social sciences, which is why Full Sail uses it. Um, this is a really good resource to use, but it is extremely dense. So if you are feeling overwhelmed looking at the Purdue Writing Lab, I want to send you to Project APA Info, or sorry, Project APA.info. This website is incredible. It was put together by Full Sail instructors for Full Sail students. Um, some of the time, based on the types of things that you guys are learning and studying, the references that you're going to be using are sometimes a little bit harder to find because you're using a lot of blogs and websites and things like that. So this breaks it down really easily. You have your reference page and it says audiovisual media, blog, websites, all of these. It breaks it down super, super easily, visually great. You've got in-text citations. Um, it's very easy to use. And I would suggest that you guys go to projectapa.info and bookmark this page because it will come in extremely, extremely handy as you go through your, um, your careers here as students. Um, all right, so I am finished with what I wanted to let you guys know and hear about. Um, do you guys have any questions? You can type them in the chat log or you can unmute your mic and um, shout them out. Um, or you can always send us um, an email. But I'm going to be on here for the next couple of minutes. And if you guys need help or have any questions, please let me know.